Welcome to video 14 of a series of introductory videos for SolidCAM. This video's topic is the HSM toolpath. HSM toolpath is another target-based toolpath from SolidCAM, and I think of it as a good companion to the HSR toolpath we saw in video 13. Video 13 showed the HSR, which is the roughing surfacing toolpath. HSM is the follow-up to that, where we can finish our part using a target-based toolpath. So let's take a look at that. So you can always access any of our toolpaths by right-clicking on the operations folder, add milling operation, HSM, or you can go to the SolidCAM AFR 3D SolidCAM tool, uh, icons up there. Now you can see from this part, I've already pre-programmed some of the toolpaths. That's because there are many strategies, many tar uh, technologies for the HSM toolpath. So I've actually laid them out here and we can go through them. The programming of these is essentially the same as the HSR toolpath. So the, a lot of the stuff I'm going to skip over in this video, you'll find in video 13. So I'll reference, I'll refer you to video 13. So let's start with the first of these toolpaths. This is the horizontal machining toolpath. So again, under technology, there are more than 10 technologies here. I'm going to try and cover all of them in this 10 minute video. Uh, horizontal machining is exactly as it sounds. It is only focusing on the horizontal faces of this part. Again, it's a target-based toolpath, so the geometry is simply just the target you defined when you first opened up the part. Tool selection is exactly the same. In this case, I'm using a quarter-inch bullnose. The constraint boundaries, as we saw with other target-based toolpaths from SolidCAM, essentially, you either let it choose it automatically, here it's cho chosen it automatically as the outside edge of the part, or you can switch it to crate manually and then use the various options here to choose it. And once you do that, you'll be brought to the same chain selection window you've seen in the other toolpaths. Again, it's target-based toolpath with a boundary area. You can control the type of boundary by choosing it from these four options. And you've seen that in video 13. Uh, I'll let you go to video 13 and see how each one of those works. In the passes section of the workflow, you'll find the specifics of this technology, uh, this particular HSM technology. Here we're doing horizontal machining. So all we really need is a offset or a radial step over. Wall offset, floor offset, self-explanatory. We're leaving nothing on the walls and the floor. Again, this is a finishing operation. In, in the case of a horizontal machining though, the wall offset is really just how far away from whatever walls it'll encounter, but it's really just focusing on the flat area. Z top, Z bottom, again, in a target-based toolpath, all we're doing with Z top and Z bottom is saying, look at the toolpath, generate a toolpath between these two uh, Z levels that uh, look, look at the, the target between these two Z levels. The same sort of point reduction and tolerances. Again, if we're you're working off a translated part, all we're doing here is really working with a surface. We might need to clean up the surface a little bit, and we can do that using the tolerances. Again, same sort of issues, uh, same sort of um, options we've seen before. Smoothing, detect core areas, and refine corners. Again, I showed you how those work in video 13. So we've got a minimum uh, minimum offset here, and because we are working on only on the flat areas. If we want to provide a max offset, we have that ability as well. So I'm going to exit out of here and let's see what that toolpath looks like. So it analyzed the whole part and is only machining the flat areas of this of this uh, piece here. Next up is the constant Z machining. And this is actually the opposite of the previous toolpath. Constant Z machining is only vertical walls, tapered walls, draft angles, or curvature. Essentially anything in the uh, that is not flat. The workflow is the same. Geometry is the target. The tool, in this case, I'm using the same tool. Constraint boundaries, exactly the same. We're just using the outside edge of the part. And if we go to passes, we'll see that we have a step down this time. I put in a step down of 10 thou, wall of floor offset, Z top, Z bottom, and uh, tolerances. Let's take a look at that toolpath. So looked at the overall t uh, piece and ignored the flat areas and has done all the tapers, curvatures, the fillets, everything that has any kind of angle to it in the Z direction. And it's a waterline cut as well. Okay, in linear machining, again, geometry is the entire part. Constraint boundaries is the entire part as well. Under passes, we have the same sort of stuff. It's just this lower corner here where we see the specifics. So with linear machining, it might actually be easier to show the toolpath and then describe what's going on behind the scenes. We take a linear toolpath. In this case, I've made it 90 degrees to the X 
uh, x-axis, and we lay a toolpath going zigzagging back and forth. Now, from this view, it looks like just a complete zigzag back and forth rectangular motion. But if we angle it, you'll see that it actually drapes that linear toolpath over the part. And it knows how far in Z and X and Y to go by the step over and the step down. And the angle of that uh, linear motion, I set it to 90 degrees to X. So essentially, it's a very easy toolpath to just zigzag back and forth. Um, you'll find as we go along that some of these toolpaths, they don't work too well based off the part. For instance, let's look at this corner here. This, the zigzagging back and forth, the linear motion, is great for these areas here. But once it gets to this embossment here, or maybe this vertical wall, that's not leaving the best finish. There's too much uh, excess material being left behind there. So a linear machining might not be the best for this portion of this part, but it definitely is very good for some of the other areas. So you'll find as you go along with HSM, each technology has its use. HSM alone is not what you're looking at. You're looking at the technology behind HSM to determine which toolpath to use on your part. That being said, this is a perfect uh, segue into the next toolpath, which is radial machining. Radial machining has, uh, um, the only type of use for radial machining is if you have a circular part that has some sort of center to it. Um, and again, what we're doing here is we're just telling it the step over between the passes. The passes are actually going to go from an internal radius to an outer radius along this angle. In this case, I'm doing the full 360. And the center point that I selected is somewhere on the part. And if we take a look at that toolpath, you'll see what I mean in terms of how it actually applies directly to the geometry. In this case, the dish, I'm doing a radial cut. If I zoom in a little more, you'll see the fanning of that. So again, it's a toolpath uh, specifically for use with any kind of radial um, repeating sort of, uh, sort of um, shape to it. Again, each strategy has its use. So under spiral machining, it's the same sort of thing. We tell it the center, we tell it the max radius, the min radius, and the step over. And what it does is it actually will drape a, a spiral toolpath along something. In this case, my, my, um, my constraint boundary was just around this embossment here. And we can see that it spirals a nice toolpath along the part. Going next to morph machining. So you'll see the same sort of thing you saw in, um, in video 12 with the morph between boundary curves. I think of this as sort of the HSM version of that, where we're giving it just a step over, but under the drive boundaries, you see now that we have a section called drive boundaries, I'm telling it to morph a toolpath between the first curve, this one on the right side, and the second curve. This one on the left side that has a little bit of a, uh, a radius on that corner there. So when we take a look at the toolpath, it actually will start with this almost straight curve. And as it goes along, you'll see that it gets more and more curved at the end, just so that it has that little shape at the, at the end there. So this is morphed machining. And this is a really good way to leave a good finish on the surface. And all I did was I told it, this is the surface I like the machine. My boundary condition was the outside edge of the surface. And I just want to morph a toolpath that starts in this sort of shape and ends in that sort of shape. Next is offset cutting. In offset cutting, you'll see the same sort of thing. We have a curve that we're going to, to use to follow. Essentially, this is kind of like, again, if I can reference um, video 12 again, this is sort of like the parallel to curve toolpath, where I've given it a curve constraint boundaries, I'm limiting it to um, the entire part, but you'll see that once I generate under uh, passes, that I only want to do a clear offset from that curve, meaning that only the 440, let's say 43 uh, distance away from the curve with a step over of 10 thou, all those parameters generate a toolpath like this. So I'm following the curve that I selected, stepping over along that curve by 10 thou, but only stepping over as much as 440 thou. So again, it has its uses if you have the geometry to dictate a toolpath such as this. Boundary machining essentially is a trim cut on the outside. You can see here from that, that, um, that icon right there. If you look at passes, we don't have anything to control this toolpath. All we're doing is just following the outside of whatever we're using as our, our drive boundary, in this case, the entire part. So that toolpath essentially looks like a trim cut on the outside. One entry, one exit and it follows the outside of the part. 
Rest machining, similar to other target-based toolpaths from SolidCam, essentially is you've done a lot of work with a previous toolpath with a larger tool. Now you'd like to step it down to a smaller tool and take care of whatever was remaining from those previous toolpaths. So what we do is choose rest machining. Our geometry is the target once again. I'm choosing the step-down tool, so the smaller tool, in this case, an eighth of an inch ball nose. Constraint boundaries, in this case, I'm doing the whole part. So you can see that I, I left it as the automatically generated outside boundary. And we have this section called reference tool. So this is the tool that came previous, or at least the tool that I'm trying to do a rest machining afterwards. So the previous tool path was probably using this 3 16th ball. So I'm going to remove the excess material left behind by that 3 16th ball. If we go to passes, the same sort of control we had before. Here's our step over, our step down. And we have the bi-tangency angle. And if you can see from that icon, basically what, it, what we're doing here is we're telling it the filleted corners that we're getting to, or even the sharp corners we're getting into, only go as deep to create that bi-tangency angle. And you can see there the angle made by the tangency points. And if we take a look at that toolpath, the only material left behind was behind this embossment here and back here near the bell shape. You can see the bitangency coming into play as it gets closer and closer to this more open area. So it doesn't need to go that deep into that part, so it didn't actually machine that area. 3D constant step over is the one that I usually go to if I don't know which of these technologies to use. And that's because the way the toolpath works is it uses the step over, horizontal step over, vertical step over, and it lays down what looks like a spiral toolpath. If I get a perpendicular view, once again, of this part, I'm using a constraint boundary of that circle there. So I'm only going to focus on the area within the circle. And if I show the toolpath, it's a spiraling toolpath going out to the, to the outer reaches of that circle. Now, again, it's a spiraling toolpath, but it's draped it on the part. If I angle the, the tool again, you'll see that it drapes it along the part. So I usually say that this is the one that if you don't know which of these other technologies to use, the horizontal, the vertical, the pencil, um, if you're not sure which one to use, you will definitely get a good looking finish if you do this one, because you can see that it's really just going at the part at all angles. Okay. Speaking of the pencil, here's the parallel pencil milling. Again, we have control over the by tangency angle. We have a horizontal and vertical step over. All we're doing with this one is getting into those, those nooks and crannies again, but through the whole part. So again, I've taken that part. It's not a rest milling operation. So if this material has already been removed and it probably has by the previous tool path, it's not looking at that. All it's looking at is very tight corners and it's only focusing on that. 3D corner offset. Um, this actually works similar to the, uh, to the previous tool path that we saw, the 3D constant step over. But what we're doing here with this one specifically is I'm showing the angle limits. So rather than from zero to 90, which would cover the entire part, I've actually added a 0.1 degree angle to this. So it's gonna ignore everything outside that range, which includes the flat area. So if I show this tool path, you can see that it's doing a 3D constant step over, or in this case, a 3D offset from, from outer corners there um, to generate a tool path, but it's ignoring the flat area. So again, if this toolpath is perfect for your part, but it's just it shouldn't be touching any vertical walls or shouldn't touch any horizontal areas because it would be a waste of time to use a ball nose on those areas, um, then you can ignore them by putting in the angle limits. And again, I should mention that with HSM, you can use flat ball nose, as in uh, flat end nose with corners, or ball nose, bull and ball. Um, those are the types you can use here. What do we have left? We have, uh, and we're going into the HSS toolpath that you would have saw in the previous videos. So I'm just gonna jump out of here. So if you have any questions on the specifics of the HSM technologies, or if you have a question on how to apply them to your particular part, you can call us at the main tech support line at 1-866-975-1115, extension two, or you can stay tuned for the rest of the videos to see how we tackle some of the other aspects of SolidCam. Thanks for watching.